Welcome to I'd like to online. Now that we've seen that there are six different methods in which we can do analysis on the circuit, the question is which method should we use? And often I get asked for this particular problem, which method we should use and so forth. But it turns out we can probably use any method almost on any circuit. Although in some circuits, some methods work better than others. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a single example, this circuit right here, and we're going to solve it with all six methods. And you'll see that in each case there's some benefits and some detractions on each of the methods. But then at that point it just becomes up to the user to figure out which method they prefer and usually that's what it comes down to. You'll lean towards some methods more than towards others. And in some cases certain types of problems lend themselves to a particular method, but now let's just see how all six methods can easily be used for this particular example, even though it's a relatively simple example. It does have a current source and a voltage source and a single node right there. So the idea is we're going to try to figure out what I1 and I2 are equal to. Now notice though that probably the voltage here is higher than the voltage at the node, so the current actually will probably flow in this direction, but we'll solve for I2 and then we'll show you how to solve for the real current in the opposite direction, I sub x. So how does the nodal analysis method work? Well, the, the methodology here says that we're going to pick a branch point, in this case we just have one branch point, we're going to call the voltage at that branch point equal to V, and then we're going to sum up all the currents entering the branch point and all the currents leaving the branch point, and of course all the currents entering should equal all the currents leaving which means that I, and let me start over here probably, so I is going to be equal to the sum, so I is the current entering the branch point, and that should equal the sum I1 plus I2 leaving the branch point. So even though we will realize that the current actually flows in the opposite direction here in this branch, we don't care, we're just going to call it I2 to the right, and it really doesn't matter, we just have to then switch it around afterwards our answer is going to be relative to the direction of these two arrows right here. So the current going into the branch point, that's easy, that's the source, that's going to be 5 amps with a phase angle of 10 degrees, and that equals the current leaving the branch point through this branch right here. Now the way to do that, current is equal to voltage divided by the impedance, so in this case that will be V divided by J8. And then we add to that to the current going into this branch point right here, and that's going to be the voltage divided by the, the impedance, but the voltage, notice, it's going to be this volt minus this volt. Now even though V may be lower than the voltage over here, the 10 volts here, we don't care, we're going to say V minus the source over here. So V minus 10 uh, at an angle of minus 60 degrees, and divide that by the impedance in the branch, which is going to be 3 minus J4. Okay, next what we probably should do is we probably should convert this, and so we can write this as 5 with an angle of 10 degrees is equal to uh, V divided by J8, and then plus V minus 10 with an angle of minus 60 degrees, divided by the magnitude here that would be equal to 5, and the phase angle, let's see here, 4 divided by 3, take the inverse tangent of that, that's a minus 53.13 degrees. Okay, now one of the things we could do here is to get rid of the, the magnitudes in the denominator, the lowest common denominator is 40, so go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 40, so on the left side we'll get 200 with a phase angle of 10 degrees equals, we'll put the j in the top, that becomes minus j, and 40 divided by 8 is 5, so that would be minus j5 times v, and then here we get plus v divided by this times 40, so 40 divided by 5 is 8, and then we bring this to the top, it becomes a plus 53.13 degrees, so that would be 8, with a phase angle of a positive 53.13 degrees times V, the unknown V at the branch point. And then here we divide this into that. First of all, 40 divided by 5 is 8, 8 times 10 is 80, so we end up with minus 80 
That's not a very good looking V. Let me try that again. There, that's a little better. So that's minus 80. And then the phase angle is going to be minus 60 plus 53. That would be a positive 6.87 degrees. Bring this to the top. So let's quickly check. We have the minus sign. Uh, we have a 400 divided by 5 is 80. And we have 60 plus 53 is a minus. Ah, good thing I checked. It's easy to make mistakes with these types of problems, so it's always a good idea to quickly check to make sure everything is correct. So bringing the minus 53 up becomes plus 53, but minus 60 is bigger, so we have a minus 6.87 degrees. Okay, at this point, what we probably should do is convert everything back into uh, uh, real and imaginary portions, and so that we can add the, the different terms together. We do want to isolate V. So we bring V to one side, everything else to the other side, and we're going to change everything to magnitudes and, uh, ima oh, not magnitudes, but uh, real and imaginary parts. So 200 with an angle of 10 degrees is going to be, aha. So we take the cosine of 10 times 200, that gives us 196.96. So 196.96 plus J, Take the sine of 10 and times 200 equals, that would be 34.73. 34.73 is equal to, on the left side, we simply have a minus, we're going to factor out a V, and then we have a minus J5. And over here, the real part, 53.13 degrees, we take the cosine of that. And we mold that times 8, that gives us 4.8, so plus 4.8 times V, and then the imaginary part, 53.13, take the sine, I bet you that's 0 0.8 times 8, that would be 6.4, so plus J 6.4, minus, okay, now, Taking that, we have 80, it's minus 80 times 6.87, so 6.87, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times the minus 80. That would be minus 79.43, and then the imaginary part, so we have 6.87, take the sine of that, so that's 0.119 times 80, that would be a minus, now here we have to be careful because we have a minus there, so we have a minus 80 and a minus 6.87 degrees. So uh, minus 6.87 degrees is here, that's a plus 80, minus 80 brings it over here. And so we have to have a minus 79.43 for the extra, for the uh, real part and the imaginary part. With the minus and the minus here, we're going to end up with a plus 9.57 J 9.57. So quick check on that. So let's see here, that would be minus, minus, yes. All right, so now we can put everything that doesn't have a V over to the left side, combine what we have over here. So in this case, we bring the minus 79 over, becomes a plus 79. So I have a 196.96 plus 79.43. That gives us a 200 and 76.39 and uh, 34.73 minus 9.57 gives us 25.16 that would be plus j 25.16 equals v times 4.8 minus oh no will be plus j 1.4 there we go so now to find V, ultimately we want to find V so we can calculate the currents. So next we can say V is going to be equal to, on the left side we have 276.39 plus J2516. And we're going to divide that by 4.8 plus J1.4. So now we want to convert that into the amplitude and uh, amplitude and angle format because that way we can do the division. So we have squared out plus 276.39 squared 
equals, take the square root of that. That's 277.53, the numerator. It's 277.53 with a phase angle of 276.39. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 5.2 degrees. Divide that by 4.8 squared plus 1.4 squared equals, that's 5, with a phase angle of 1.4 divided by 4.8, take the inverse tangent, 16.26 degrees. And so finally, V equals 277.53 divided by 5, that's 55.51 with a phase angle of 5.2 minus 16.26. It would be minus 11.06 degrees. And let's see here. Do, are we going to need that? Ah, we'll leave it like this for now. So finally, we found the voltage at the node. So that's the idea. That's what we call nodal analysis. We need to find the voltage at the node. So now we're allowed or able to calculate I1 and I2. We probably want to convert this answer into the real and imaginary parts because we're going to need that later. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we have 55.51 uh, times 11.06, take the cosine of that, equals, that would be 54.48. And minus J, 11.06, take the sine of that, and uh, multiply times 55.51, we get 10.65. Okay, so now we're ready to calculate the two currents I1 and I2. Starting with I1, that's going to be equal to the voltage difference between the node and the reference point right here, which we can assume to be at zero volts, so that's grounded. So it would be V divided by the impedance on that branch, which is J8. So in this case, the V here would be 55.51 with a phase angle of minus 11.06. And we divide that by J8 would be 8 with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees. So this becomes equal to... 55.51 divided by 8, which is 6.94. With a phase angle of 90 goes to the top, that's minus 90, that would be minus 101.06 degrees. All right, so now for I2, that was relatively easy. I2 is going to be a little bit harder. So for I2, what we need to do is take the voltage difference between this point and this point right here, divided by the impedance on the branch. That means we need to find the difference between these two voltages. So let's go ahead and do that right here in this box. There. And uh, so we're going to find V minus 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees. Now V we have right here, that's equal to 54.48 minus J 10.65. And subtract from that, that which is, uh, let's see, 60, the cosine of that, that's 5. And that would be minus J, uh, that would be 0.866, that would be 8.66. There's a 6 right here. There we go. All right, doing that, we get this minus that, that was equal to 49.48, and this would be bigger, so minus J, 10.65, minus 8.66, that would be 1.99. Okay, so now we have the difference in the voltages that can go over here, so it would be... Uh, V minus 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by uh, 3 minus J4. So this would be equal to 49.48 
minus j 1.99 all divided by converting this it would be 5 with a phase angle of minus 53.13 degrees which is equal to now we have to reconvert that back so 49.48 squared plus 1.99 squared take the square root of that that's 49.52 the phase angle of 1.99 divided by 49.48 take the inverse tangent that would be minus 2.3 degrees minus 2.30 degrees and divide that by 5 with a phase angle of minus 53.13 degrees so finally I2 is equal to 49.52 divided by 5, that would be 9.90, 9.90 with a phase angle of 53.13 minus 2.3 is 50.83 degrees, like that. And of course, that would be in terms of amps. So let's put amps behind there and over here, go ahead and make sure we understand this is currents that should also be in terms of amps. Now taking a look at this circuit, initially I thought that this V would be a lower voltage than the voltage over here, in other words that I thought that the current I sub X would be in this direction, but on further inspection, inspection we looked at V being 55 volts and V over here only being a positive 10 volts on this part of the voltage source, so the current is indeed going to flow from there to there, so we really don't need the I sub X, we can get rid of that, and so now we have everything in terms of I1 and I2, which is indeed correct relative to the source current and the source voltage in the circuit. So this is how we solve the circuit using node analysis. Most of us like this method, it's always a straightforward method, it takes a lot of work typically, but it can be done readily, and as long as you don't make a little mistake, like I often do, uh, you end up coming up with the right answers like this. And that's how it's done.